anyway, I did that. And then I, it's like the way you're like, oh, I tried everything. It's just so much fun. All right. All right. Don't worry. I'm going to do a couple of silly things for sure. That's fun. Anyway. Speaking of silly things, Jim and Rob are with us. Hi, Jim and Rob. Good to see you. Where have you been for the Hi. last few weeks? Me. Me. Or no, Nate. I, so Nate. All right. I have been. I taking, heard you were hung over. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, Jim. Jim thinks it's real funny to pick on the guy when he's not on the show. Uh, I was just taking a break. Uh, I had been doing basically. I had basically gone four years straight without taking a break from the podcast. Um, and I was just a little bit burnt out and yeah, uh, exactly. I wanted a little bit of time away. So I took a month off and uh, Jim was supposed to be my uh, my fellow uh, podcaster taking over the show and making sure that I kept on going. But uh, every single week he canceled last second. So well, sure, uh, really, he gives the job to a guy who's got a brand new baby, right? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's a great, great, he's great. He's got a full time job. He likes to play a little pool once in a while, you know, and, and then he he's got a little like baby. For his friends need him. And he's not there when his friends need him. I mean, I'm just telling you what, you know, he says he's, he says he's the, the best Robin for the most incompetent Batman. That's our joke. But yeah, I, I think he's a pretty unreliable Robin. I I'm on Jim's side 100% with this. What, wait, why, is, why are you on Jim's side? Because you're... Oh, that's great. That's great. All right. So that's <laughs> Did fun. you just kick him out? Yeah. Did you just yeah, kick no, him out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, this takes- is how it works. <laughs> I'm going to be polite then. Yeah, nobody <laughs> takes Jim's side over me. Nobody. Did you learn your lesson, old man? <laughs> uh, I'm not above doing that, just so you know. But, um, yeah, I just took a little bit of a break. And uh, I guess some, I don't know, halfway exciting news. We, uh, My wife and I just had an accepted offer on a house. So that is... His first home. A bit of an exciting thing, I guess. So we're going to have a new podcast studio coming up, which is going to be nice and fun, hopefully. Um, You've been looking for a place for like a couple of months already, yeah? Yeah, well, since... Must have been frustrating. About July, yeah. We've been trying to get into a house since July, and uh, we just finally had a uh, an accepted offer, so lots of room. Finally. Congratulations. Huge congratulations. Thanks. And now... I bet your living room is going to be bigger than my whole apartment here. Well, uh, you can well, when you come to the first States, thing you people ask you is whether whether it fits a pool table, and you said like obviously uh, seven footer and a nine footer, both of them, right? You said yeah, in the living yeah. room. So there's enough room in the living room. I think the living room is it's like a giant open fl- uh, floor concept. It's a uh, I want to say it's like twenty six foot by fifteen and a half foot or something like that. So we can we have enough room to put a, a nine footer uh, diagonally. Or, or, or I guess uh, the long ways, and then uh, a seven footer the other way. So, room for a nine footer and a seven footer. I have a seven footer that's kind of at a friend's house, so just got to get a nine footer now. Diamond, if you're watching this, you know, uh, Diamond or Predator, you know, hook a brother up. Um, th- this this podcast wow. gets dozens <laughs> of listeners. So very smooth. Dozens very of smooth. listeners. There's some really powerful that. advertising. Very smooth. That was just that was no shame whatsoever there, no. mate. No shame whatsoever. Ship it. We're not afraid to beg on this podcast for any. We are not. You know, we've gotten, we've gotten, we've gotten ball shavers. You can say we're humble on this podcast. (laughs) Yeah. So there it is. So uh, that's, that's been my last month. That's why you guys haven't been seeing me. Just taking a little bit of a break away. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be, I guess, moving in the next couple months. So um where a close date is actually in three weeks from today. So we're kind of going through the process pretty quickly. Uh, but we're going to have some more shows. Uh, I'm back at it now. So I think tomorrow, um, Pinozo and I are going to be interviewing uh, Torsten Holman. So that's going to be a fun one. That one's going to be, I think, around 3 p.m. my time. So 3 p.m. Um, Doggin is looking better now. Well, it's too bad I can't kick people out of the... Uh... So I'm your first guest after a while, yeah? So I'm supposed to be your fresh air. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. Uh, Jim, you got this interview basically lined up. So why don't you get it started? Let's get underway. Well, I want well, to know what's well, happening in Poland here pretty quick. Yeah. Welcome to the world 10 ball champion. Uh, thank Still you. The world 10 ball champion. Champion. Wojciech Shevchik. Wojciech, an old friend of the podcast. Welcome back. How have you been keeping? Did you have a good Christmas and New Year? 
Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. I mean, uh, I ended my season with Polish championships uh, that took place around mid December. And after that, I was actually planning to uh, get to the pool table pretty quick, pretty hard, because the majors are coming up pretty soon, uh, early February. Uh, but I did have some time off, uh, so uh, so just recharging and uh, also some like social pool, so just with friends, of course, focused, but uh, like a little bit relaxed as well. Uh, but now, yeah, now I'm trying to get back in stroke and like fully focused mode. Yeah, 2022, big year for you. Shall we just go oh. straight? Shall we just go straight back to April? Haven't really spoken to you much since. You know, uh, well, it, it's been it's been good. Besides that, being being a world champion, actually, if you cut uh, cut out uh, this result, it would still be my best year of of the career, I think, money wise for sure. But I also had some high finishes: uh, third in Las Vegas Open, uh, second in uh, European Championships in Tambo as well, and uh, fifth in Puerto Rico. So a couple good ones. Oh, mate, you're holding something special there. That's the cue that won it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, and I and I really uh, spoiled it with with my terrible signature. I was trying <laughs> really my best. Oh no, don't do a close up. <laughs> but but then you know it's genuine. Yeah, that's the cue I won the world championships with, and I'm very happy to uh, that my great friend, best friend, has it uh, at home. Ooh. Right now. I wanted to, I, I, I wanted to Otherwise, that. he wouldn't just kick me out of the of the of the podcast. I had to oh, say that. <laughs> I, I did want to mention that. I mean, you're you're, you're sporting your your Mez uh, jacket there. You are now a Mez player. Is it a coincidence, or did did you really feel a difference when you switched over to Mez? I mean, every player they every player they they, they move to another sponsor, whether it's an equipment sponsor, and they, mm -hmm. they have to say how much they enjoy the equipment and how how much of a difference it makes to their game, and it it's the best gear they've ever played with. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Well, you know, months yeah. later, you're world champion. That's true. I mean, it it was around. Yeah, yeah. I I, I signed with Mess uh, in January or February of the year before. Uh, before that, I played for all for ten years with uh, custom cues from Martin Welk from uh, Germany. So shout out to him. Those were fantastic cues. If they if they weren't, I wouldn't have used them for so long. Uh, but then I switched to Mess and. Uh, and they are just super high quality cues, you know. And uh, I think one year of playing with the queue was just perfect timing to get a uh, like hundred percent feeling for it. And uh, yeah, yeah, there is just nothing to complain about. I, I'm not gonna compare brands here because I'm actually also not really a queue perfect queue seeker because you have this kind of uh, pool player profile. Yeah, like someone does who does change his shot every other match or something like this that is experimenting a lot. Uh, me, personally, when I know I have a high-quality equipment that suits me, in a way, I know that I just need to spend a little bit time with it to have all the touchy shots figured out. And with Maz, I had the feeling of quality straight away. Uh, but I think my very first tournament I played with my with the queue you're, Nate, you're, you're having was the VG10, actually. Uh, when I received it, they, they asked me to play straight away. It was still in COVID, so we were on the lockdown. I asked if I can play this tournament with my older queue because I'm not feeling super comfortable yet. And they said, of course, but if you don't mind and if you could use the mess already, that would be that would be nice. So I did, and uh, I was doing pretty good. So straight away, the queue was feeling pretty nice. And after a year, we were just best friends already, and uh, I could do anything I wanted with that. Uh, so... Uh, whenever I was missing or playing bad, I knew it's not the equipment. It's something about me. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Mez for for producing a really great, great quality uh, um, equipment. If you don't Good. mind me asking, what kind of tip do you have on your stick? Uh, Zantip. Uh, they have some kind of cooperation, Mez and Zan. Uh, I'm also sponsored by Zantip. Uh, so, okay. uh, and they are they are installed there uh, there by default. And uh, I just like them, so it's a um, uh, medium, medium hardness of a zombie. Okay, so I do have a, uh, a question for you about your career. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you're fairly young, correct? Uh, Twenty-eight. Twenty. So you've been, you've had ten years in competition, pretty high-end competition, correct? 
Yeah, around that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you recall at all uh, a time or a ma particular match, for that matter, where all of a sudden you you got through this, what's called, I call it a pressure leap, where mm -hmm. now the situation you're in no longer dictates how you feel about the shot you're about to perform, but it actually helps you uh, perform better. Uh, do you remember, mm -hmm. do you recall any particular, a lot of times in people's careers, there'll be like one player that they really got to get through and they can't quite, but they do. And when they do, all of a sudden, Mario right e. did, did you have an epiphany <laughs> like that in your career at any one time that you can recall? Uh, yeah, I actually do recall a couple of milestones, I would call them in my career. Okay. Uh, but uh, I was doing pretty good as a junior. Uh, I was already competing uh, with men as well in Poland. I won my first Grand Prix when I was 16. So still a junior and already uh, like in a competition. But uh, it's actually funny because uh, my first like a kind of a breakthrough was exactly 10 years ago when I turned 18. That was uh, being a runner up in the Euro Tour uh, back then. And that was actually when I became a runner up in Austria Open. That was 2012. That was the very first time that I even qualified to last 32. So at the same time, I, I, I made like a huge leap from being uh, just a youngster who tried to win a match here and there. I got all the way to the final. And the same year, because of gathering some Moscone points, uh, I qualified for World Cup of Pool with Karol Skowelski. That was a huge surprise because actually normally they took two best players from the Euro Tour ranking. And actually... Uh, already two players from Poland were announced to go there. Uh, that was Mateusz Śniegotki and Radosław Babica. And uh, then it turned out that they changed the rules and they took uh, teams from the Moscone ranking. So that was a very bad surprise for Mateusz and Radosław, but a very happy moment for me that I found out that I'm going for World Cup full with Skowerski. And then uh, there we went and we ended up being runner-ups as well. Uh, in workout pool. So I, I was just 18. Uh, like a year ago, I was watching, I remember Ruslan Chinako playing uh, invitational uh, mushroom events. And I was thinking, wow, so young and already among all those uh, pro stars. And a year later, I was there in the final of workout pool. That was just uh, mesmerizing. I mean, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was just, I was just over the moon. And uh, so that, that was the first leap I took, uh, definitely, that I knew I can get far in the top pro events. And it was very unexpected, you know, back then. Uh, and then I had to wait another five years because it was all going in five years, streaks of time. <laughs> um, I was developing, of course, I was getting some high finishes. But after five years, um, I managed to win my first uh, profes professional European event that was Mad Bucharest Open in 2000. Or maybe that was actually 2018. Uh, but around that, around that, after five years, I managed to get to the quarterfinal of the uh, World Nine Championship. So I was very close to medal, historical medal, because uh, before that, actually before my World Championship title, there was no uh, medal in uh, individual World Championships for Poland yet. So that was like a big race between us, kind of, yeah, it's because we you already know that everyone knew that Polish players are capable but there was no medal yet back then. So I was very close uh, already a couple of years ago. And then I won the Mets Bucharest Open, which was huge because you get all the top players there. It was basically like a year or two. So I proved myself uh, for me and for others maybe as well. Uh, and then it was grind again. It was hard work, hard work, uh, some good results, some worse. And five years later, um, I'm having this thrill uh, that I also had 10, year, 10 years ago because the, the week of World Cup of Pool uh, in 2012 in the Philippines. That was definitely the best seven days of my life because uh, it was just so unexpected. I was uh, first, first one night I'm dreaming about it and then the other night it's happening. And then I went and uh, waited and worked for a uh, long 10 years to have that feeling again. And this time, uh, like the ultimate prize, the, the being on top of the world. Don't forget a European champion 10 ball in between as well, correct? Uh, no, no, runner-up uh, just uh, two months before the World Championships. Runner-up yeah, runner in the European Championships. Okay. Yeah, I lost to Sanjin, yeah.
And don't forget, don't forget a semifinalist in the the VG10. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> can't forget the VGs. No, oh, you can't forget them. <laughs> Actually, I loved your tournaments, but I remember every time I was uh, uh, eliminated in some uh, like painful way. Yeah. <laughs> it was a painful. It was yeah, a painful yeah. tournament. It was yeah. a painful. Yeah, can yeah. Be, pool, for can, sure. Pocket pool can be painful. There's no question about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just have to accept that. Otherwise, you can go yes. mad quickly. Yeah. So one other is, question, is, though, I have for you. Yeah. Uh, you you uh, had said when you were talking about your uh, cue stick and yeah. and uh, uh, how happy you were in things, but you, you did say something that I especially like it on touchy shots. Okay. Now... That that needs you got to deep in go get a little deeper in that for the folks listening. Mm -hmm. And we know what touchy means in our games, what touchy mm -hmm. shots. But I want to know what you mean by that. Uh, okay, got gotcha. touchy shots. Is that such a certain angle shots or certain speed or certain situations? Uh, well, you know, like for example, how much do I want to draw the ball? You get used to that pretty quickly. I think I just need a couple shots with the cue to adjust my shot what the outcome I want to have. Also with deflection, this is like something in between because this is kind of touchy, but I just need a couple shots to make an adjustment and then know more or less how to hit a ball with the cue. But what I mean by touchy shots it are all the shots when you elevate a little bit, for example, so of a Chinese snooker or especially when you use a touch of side spin having the cue ball on the rail. Those are very touchy because uh, there the deflection and the mate effect can be so powerful. Sometimes you're not sure on which side you actually uh, should aim to, to, in order to make the ball. So, so for example, those, those, they take a lot of time. Also, uh, the touchy shot that I have in mind is uh, flicking a ball, flicking a ball with a lot of side spin when you just want to, like let's say you have a nine ball on the end rail and you just want to flick it and, and, and play a safety. That's very touchy also. With the cue, you don't know you're going to probably miss a ball entirely or play it half ball. So th those kind of shots you learn with time and with a lot of practice. Okay. And how about just kick shots then, just ball hitting the rail and spinning, that type of thing? Yeah, yeah, that, that too, that too, because when you're playing a kick, uh, the spin makes a huge difference. Not only a side spin, but... Uh, whether you stand uh, stand the ball, play with with a little bit draw, the outcome is very different uh, okay. of the rail. So that as well, yeah, good, uh, yeah, good point. Okay, yeah. Jim, go ahead. So what? what so we're, we're back in April again. You become world champion for the first time. You have you you have your Polish group uh, that you seem to travel all together. You're you're kind of like a a, a team. Uh, you're all individuals. You're all there to win for yourself, but you seem to support each other. How, how much of a of a difference, uh, a positive difference, did it make having those guys with you when you're playing these big finals? You know, and you you look over, and maybe your opponent is sitting on his own. He's got some fans, people supporting him in the crowd, but you've got mm -hmm. real friends there who really, really, really have your back. How important do you think that is for you and for the rest of the Polish players? Mm, I think it can really make a difference. Uh, specifically on um, the World Championships, I was pretty much on my own there. It doesn't. Ha it, it is not always like this, but uh, you know, guys were already out of the tournament, so uh, we were flying back home the next day. So they just went out a little bit. So for the most part of the last day, I was basically doing on my own, uh, but with one huge ex exception uh, when I was playing for my medal against Edgy Geronimo from the Philippines in the quarterfinal, the craziest match of my life, probably. Um, and we were pretty even, around 6-6, six, six, and then he, uh, he, he, he ran away with 9-6 for him, so he was on the hill, and he missed the 10 ball, uh, and I banked it for 9-7 when I was already packing my cues in my head, because him having the 9 and 10, that was super easy. Then he missed position slightly for the 10, and he missed it. Uh, and then when I made it 9-7, uh, Konrad Justicen came to my table and just uh, shouted uh, loudly, uh, come on, Wojtek, fight until the end. Uh, and pretty typical thing to say, but this one really w went straight to my heart and gave me some extra motivation and extra belief in myself. 
and I ended up winning that match. Uh, so probably if it wasn't for him, maybe it didn't, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't have happened. Um, so so yeah, that, that was just huge because all the pre- I think that was the, the most pressure I could have because uh, that was like I, I was telling you already we were waiting for this individual medal for so long. I think that was around seventh quarter final for a Polish player. So I was a, a kind of a curse for us already. So playing a hill hill match uh, from being six nine down uh, that was as nervy I, as as it can be, and uh, he helped me out to get through that moment. Uh, and later on in the semi-final final in the final it's a little bit different because you play with a shot clock you don't have that much time to think and you play on the tv arena where uh, your pulse are get get a little bit lost in the crowd uh, so so i was basically focused to to just play the game i was focused on myself uh, actually i was cutting out all the extra factors that were happening around me uh, so in that particular tournament, uh, maybe I was more of my own than in others because sometimes it really is that way that we gather around uh, for entering for our pal, and uh, and the uh, support is genuine and uh, it's definitely helpful because uh, uh, you know it's always uh, merrier in the crowd. Uh, we, we we lose together, we know how it is, we know how to comfort each other, and when we win, we know how much of a how hard it is, how much of a struggle it can be. Uh, so we just support each other to keep on going further. I, I guess it also makes all the traveling a lot easier as well when you're when you're traveling together in a group and uh, arranging things together and you, you, you're there to support each other. With all that, can well, I guess that makes it easier as well. In one way, yes. But, uh, well, I have this maybe sometimes uncomfortable position of being a manager of everyone because <laughs> sometimes when I have eight guys going for a tournament, Everyone seems to wait for this one person to check the hotels and uh, and the travel, and uh, I'm the first to uh, to do that um, very often. Not always, but very often. So then uh, it's sometimes extra work because you try to arrange it so that everyone has it uh, pretty comfortable. Not always, and I'm not the only guy. Actually, I could surprise it because Victor is also uh, w- one of those. Um, wow! Is the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't seem like, but he can do that and uh, and is pretty good at it. It's actually a pretty nice skill traveling so much. We are really good at checking flights and saving a couple hundred bucks here and there and uh, yeah, checking all the options. So yeah, I'm pretty good at that. And uh, uh, of course, it's always uh, nice to also to to share because uh, you can uh, cut some costs and then go for more tournaments like this. Has when you have a group that you know is always traveling. Has Team Poland decided to get a? Or have you guys ever got uh, given any thought to getting yourselves a private jet for your seventy-five thousand uh, players? <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a bad idea at all. If <laughs> anyone wants to sponsor us, look, look, comes uh, a lot of Polish airlines, Qatar Airways, uh, feel welcome. We yeah. got uh, look. I'm here on a podcast. We and millions are watching. Yeah, I'm trying to do it. <laughs> At least dozens. Well, I just saw. I just dozens. saw on Facebook where Elvis Presley's jet, his personal private jet, was sold yeah. for two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. So that's a pretty cheap price for a jet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Everything. That was something. His Elvis's. Yeah. So well, how, uh, how does that? How does that then affect you? How, how do you then? Yeah, how do you deal with being world champion? I mean, I can imagine it's it's once it's sunk in, it's a big deal, you know. It's that's, that's a lot. I mean, yeah. it, it, people think it must be easy. You're world champion now, but I can imagine there's also a downside to it. A bit of a do you, did you did you ever have a thought saying, well, what's next then? What what, what repeat? You know, <laughs> yeah, repeat, repeat, or now I'm yeah. Yeah, for sure we can imagine there can be a couple effects. This what you have, it can happen for sure, but not for me, I guess. I'm still too early in my career, and obviously there are so many goals I can follow that I didn't have that feeling of what's next. Uh, it's rather like a satisfaction and a huge relief as well that you get this major title in your bag because after all, this is what we are all playing for. And so many top players might never get it and will never get it because this is just statistics. I mean, Shane Van Boning got his after so long, um, uh, finally. And, um, and it's a huge relief that 
when I end my career and who knows when it happens. I plan to play for a long time, but you never know uh, what circumstances in life can catch you. Uh, I, I will always have something to come back to and to be proud of and to tell uh, like uh, this story on every uh, family gathering, on every occasion, to bore every of my all of my family members with that. So that that's a lot of satisfaction. But as a, as the, as the opposite effect uh, for me, what can work is uh, is just some extra pressure of being a champion. Maybe maybe I shouldn't be too sincere here publicly, but I, I think I should be. Uh, um, when you invite me, you you uh, you deserve that. So, so definitely there is this extra pressure that uh, I had to accept and I'm in progress of accepting, I would say. Um, I think uh, I felt it the strongest after a couple of months already, already when, uh, you know, when, when the title was still fresh, you're still on fire. But then when your shape goes down a little bit, uh, everyone expects you to play flawlessly, but you're not really feeling it. You lost, you lost the, the groove. Uh, this is this is a lot of pressure because you go to a tournament and everyone thinks you're gonna do perfect, but you're not feeling very confident. And uh, I think it's pretty typical, actually. I was expecting that in a way, uh, so I didn't let it to hurt me too much. Uh, so so I, I I still had a pretty good season after that. I think it wasn't like maybe. Uh, F FSR kind of breakthrough that I started winning everything. But I was still very, very solid on each tournament. I, I managed to beat top players. Uh, I, I didn't manage to repeat any of that. I didn't get to a final of a major again this year, uh, that year. But um, yeah, I, I think I was pretty reasonable about it. But as you said, there were a couple effects and some of them were positive for a pool player and some of them were, were kind of an obstacle. And how, how, much, how much of the pressure was was your own expectations for yourself and how much was what you thought other people expected from you? Yeah, it's a blend. It's, it's a combination. Uh, you can get, get into a kind of a negative spiral because you expect from yourself and uh, you, ex you expect others to expect. Maybe it was actually imaginary for me, you know? Maybe the, the pressure from the outside wasn't there, but you expect it to be there. So, yeah, yeah, as we know, pool is a mental game and, uh, and I'm pretty analytical about it. So uh, that was pretty dangerous for me not to think too much about it, not, not to create things that are not there. Uh, yes, I'm pretty serious, but this is what happens in, to your head when, when uh, like big titles are at stake and, and a sports career, basically. There, there is kind of a lot that can mess up with your mind. Uh, but I was trying to like reason it, to talk about it also with my mental coach. That was very helpful. That is very helpful. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm, I'm proud of it. It looks like it when you play. I've watched you play. And, and that part of the game seems like you're under control of that pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I do uh, have a question for you. you about, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I have a question for you about uh, – it's a kind, kind of comparative question uh, – uh, for ten years now, you say you've been you've been playing. Do you see at the top tier of the game, these other top players in the world? Do you see that group of people expanding now, and that there's more players up there that say can go to these top tournaments, world tournaments, championships, and win them than there was ten years mm -hmm. ago? Yes, I think so. Uh, well, uh, you can see that uh, the easiest on the Euros, I think. Uh, because uh, right now there are still around 200 players traveling and if you're lucky you can get an easy first round maybe if, if when you play someone that came there just for fun just just to play against you but is not really a pro player but uh, like real contenders like European former European world champions you got uh, 20 to 30 but then you have around 50 to 70 players that are just good enough that, that their game is just there to play a perfect set. So, so your turn became as tough as it can be. I got better, but it got so tough that I still, still cannot manage to, to win it uh, up to this point. Uh, but it's, I think it's pretty much the same on the world stage. I mean, it's also uh, a little bit tricky right now because after COVID, you I kind of had an impression that Asian players needed a while to get back in their strokes. 
uh, and they are getting back. Some some players uh, are actually actually absent for for uh, since COVID. Uh, it's easy to forget some names that used to be uh, right there in the top uh, of the list of the rankings. Uh, so so it's changing so fast, you know. Actually, uh, uh, but but yeah, I, I think as pool is getting more professional. Okay. You you need to you need to search for your advantage in really small small aspects of of your training of your preparation. So uh, everyone is like searching more. It's trying to be more more professional. Uh, work smarter. So so that's why the level gets higher and also is more even. I would agree with that. Okay. So let me get some more questions in that we've had come in from the, uh, the yeah, chat room. Of course. Uh, question from Josh. Do you think that Victor will be the next world champion? And if you, well, let's, let's, let's open it up to who do you think the next Polish world champion will be? Oh, Victor has all the chances definitely to be uh, the next one. Uh, but we all could easily uh, mention uh, all the Polish players that are in contention to do that. Uh, he might have the biggest chance, you know, he, he proved that already he was so close in Puerto Rico. He got, uh, he was the runner up, whether it's him or whether it's me, it's not for me to judge, but uh, I could, I would like to mention a couple others. Uh, Daniel Macho, my dear teammate, uh, improving so fast and playing so much you're already being just uh, one or two years old, older than, right. than Victor. Sorry. And he was a semi-finalist of that same event, right? Uh, no, he was a quarter finalist with me, together with me and Konrad Justusen. And uh, but he was a runner-up uh, right before that in Puerto Rico Open. Uh, lost to Carlo Biado after a, a decent set, but Car Carlo played flawlessly. It was really tough to beat him. But uh, yeah, he played. He he beat some monsters along the way. So he's right there with his game. I actually told that to many people before uh, he started showing up on a big stage. That is coming soon for him. So I'm not very surprised, uh, but yeah, being uh, like answering uh, specifically, I think Victor has uh, the best chance, excluding me. I'm not talking about myself here, but uh, the other guys, uh, Daniel, Mieszko, Konrad, uh, Szymon Kural, maybe you know him, uh, current world junior champion. Maybe not quite there yet, but you, he could surprise you how good he's playing. I mean. I would love to be such a shot maker as him, actually. Uh, there are many in contention that could do that. I've always next. liked Tomasa's game. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. The, the uh, uh, like, older line of players as well. Uh, you got, you got uh, Kaplan, you got Śniegowski, Skowerski. Babica is also having like a second youth, in my opinion, because <laughs> I'm having such a tough time beating him. He is so consistent lately. Against me, he's playing great. Uh, yeah, with Radoslav, you never know. I'm rooting for him every time. I just, we, you keep throwing names around as if we're talking about the top players in Europe. We're, we're only talking about one <laughs> country. We're only talking about Poland. How, how, is, how has, <laughs> this, how has well, this happened? I mean, that's in, a perfect in, in, transition. In your, in your opinion, Wojcik, how has this happened? What, what has made this explosion of incredible players in Poland all coming through at the same time? I mean, if this if this was football, you'd be guaranteed world champions for like the next uh, uh, two or three. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Ten, like ten players all playing at the top of their game at the same time. How does this happen? Yeah. And before, yeah, you, before very... you tackle that, one second because yeah. uh, I think that this is a fun question to go in on that. Team Poland versus Team Philippines. How do you pick Team Poland? Poland styles. <laughs> Pick only your... five Polish players. How do you pick the five Polish players? Yeah, that's well, not easy. Five, that's not how easy. do you pick the five Filipinos? Who do you think would win? <laughs> yeah, it? exactly. Even tougher, I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Who are your five players you think would represent? Uh, so you can answer that question. Then uh, who do you think your five would be? And who do you think would win, Poland or Philippines? Uh, so you want me to pick five for both teams? Yeah. Or just for Poland? Uh, just Jim for Poland. and I will pick for Poland. Uh, Jim and I will pick for the Philippines. All right, all right. Uh, so, so, so for Poland, let me uh, include myself. Uh, but as a last, so, so let's start with Victor Daniel. That's well, my somebody, some, somebody has to book. Somebody has to book the hotel rooms and the flights. So you have exactly, to <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the three of us: me, Daniel, and uh, and Victor. 
and then I'll go with uh, Conrad. And uh, the fifth pick, we got also Sebastian Batkowski. We, that we, because we were throwing out names, but throwing in names, it's but I did, we didn't mention everyone. There was there are still a couple left. Really? Um, and as a fifth one. Mesko Fortunski, he's he's in there as well. I, I, I think Mesko. I think Mes I think Mesko, but I I really feel a strong temptation to go with Shimon uh, Shimon Kuro, actually. Okay, Jim, who do we got for the Philippines? We got uh Carlo Beato, Dennis Arcoya, Anton Raga. Who else who else do you think? I'd put Pagalain in there, I'd call him Filipino anyway. Again. No. <laughs> even if well, he is, you can't take him back again? No. But even if he is, <laughs> even if he is, I don't think he can put him in at this point in his career. Would you put effort in? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why put, go put effort in for the viewers. Got to put effort in. Well, I, I mean, I guess we picked Earl, right? If Earl can play in the Moscone Cup, Africa can certainly okay, clearly, play. Clearly, Jim yes. doesn't take this very seriously, so I'll just do it myself. All right, I'll, I'll, I put Denison, Anton, uh, Carlo Beato, Lee Van Corteza, and who do I want as a fifth? I, I will put Jeff DeLuna just for his break. Jeff, sure. you have you have already been eliminated from this, Jim. You uh, clearly don't take this seriously. Yeah, but, but already right. a couple of names in my head. How you cannot miss out uh, Johan Chua, for example. I gonna, no, well, I was going to say the Johan Chua. Was, uh, my in my opinion, it's either going to be Johan Chua, or uh, it's going to be um, Roberto. I think. Oh, Roberto. Wow. No, it's it, it's or definitely even, even crazier in in the Philippines. Even Jeffrey oh, he, was absent. he was absent for some time. I wonder what's happening to him, actually. Because yeah, he was such a joy to watch, yeah? Jeffrey. So who do you think? Who, all right, we're going to, we'll, we'll say, uh, we'll say Johan Chua. Who do you think wins? Okay. Poland or Philippines? Depends where oh, <laughs> I strongly believe we give them a good battle. Uh, but if you want to be, uh, me to be uh, sincere, I say they are favorite. But it doesn't mean they win. Ooh. It doesn't mean they win. Do you think do you think that that Polish team that you picked beats the US? Mm, I think then we are favorite. We are we are, I think we are slight favorite. It also depends, you know, because it's a very direct question, but then it very much depends on the circumstances. For example, Moscone Arena, I'm not so sure because they are so used to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that can be a huge factor. I mean, top players can look like amateurs there easily. Uh, so, so on the Moscone Arena, that's that definitely that will be an advantage for uh, for USA. But the way they played, for example, against Russia, uh, this this challenge, yeah, be, before some Moscone Cups, uh, Russia ended up beating them actually one year at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like uh, something we we are more used to, I think we have a we have a strong chance. Sure. So, I, I, so, so I tell me, how? How has oh, this VG, Nate, VG. What 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 are you eating in Poland that is creating all these pool players? Oh uh, yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah. You asked me that and I uh, left it out. Uh, it's it's a tough question. I think you know. Uh, first of all, there is a lot of ambition, and uh, that goes from one player to another because I see other players trying hard, trying their best. So. It gives me the motivation that I don't even think about. Uh, so we all have this inner drive to, to be better players, and we all treat it very seriously, uh, too. And, uh, and you know, it, I don't think it just happened in one year. It was like an evolution, more of an evolution. Uh, each year, going back, I don't know, 10 years, you could say, oh, Polish player progressed this year. And next year, you could say the same. So we are go going already from like a level of being pretty competitive. Every year for the last at least 10 years, we are getting better. So, so we are still consistent, but just on a higher level. And this year it happened to be just enough to get some titles that are wor worth talking about. Of course, it's also like easier a little bit. Once you break through a barrier that we have with the medal, it felt easy, almost easy in Puerto Rico, probably for Victor to get that silver. We, there were four players in the quarterfinals. What a success that was in Puerto Rico! Very. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I think like a year before we were already there. You had you had like this, I don't know, top three finishes, quarterfinalists, and now we just took one step further. 
which happens to be already a huge success. And, uh, and I think we are ready for more. Doesn't mean it's going to be as successful 2023. Uh, but no one will be surprised if it, if it is, if it, if, if it will be. We, we, you mentioned a, a, a whole list of players there, but you also mentioned a couple of perhaps new names to a lot of people, younger players who are coming through. Can we expect this conveyor belt of top Polish players to continue in the near future? You, there, there are new ones coming through. Is there, is there a, is there a, a, a talent within the within the youth selection there within Poland that you can see coming through to be big players on the professional tour uh, in, a, in the coming years? Yes, uh, yeah, I mentioned already a couple of times Shimon Kural. Um, uh, to me, he started traveling for pro events a little bit too late, but it's, there is no harm. I mean, he can easily catch up because he is just as good as any of the uh, Polish uh, team members already. Uh, when there are Polish championships, he, he wins or he loses. It's like a coin flip. Um, uh, and he's only 18. He's a war, already a world junior champion, so he al also proved uh, himself that he can play under a lot of pressure uh, on a big stage. Uh, and he's playing Futures for only one year uh, now. Uh, so so he's like a newbie uh, on the European stage. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gets uh, somewhere far in the, in the Eurotour next season or does good in some other tournaments because he is ready right now. And there are a couple others uh, that are working hard and improving fast. Uh, they just have a tough time to like go uh, to get to the national team because our men are got so strong and got so professional <laughs> that uh, I think just this ex experience and uh, just these years of practice, it's already not possible to catch up so quickly for it. 15 or 16 years old. That would have to be a massive talent to, to be able to compete with top Polish players because uh, we just play and practice for so long. But they are already there. I mean, uh, our 15, 16 years old guys would compete with us 10 years ago. I don't know if, I, if you know what I mean. They, yeah. they are better, but they cannot yet beat us because the uh, Polish team is, is pretty strong. So it's hard for them to get to the finals of all your Grand Prix, for example. But they have all the uh, potential to, to become uh, world pros if they keep on practicing. It is. I mean, it's, yeah, it's there, a, there are a couple of guys. It's a, it's a positive and negative thing. I mean, you, 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 you are pushing each other to become better and better and better because you're, you're, you're still fighting within your own country to be in that selection. But then in a, it's a, it has a negative effect in other ways. If you look at like... Um, like the matchroom events, the invitational events, they only have so many spots. I mean, the World Cup of Pool is two players. How do you pick two players yeah. out of all those players? There's going to be top, top, top players that miss out. They would have played for any other country, but That's it just true. happens because you're Polish, you get blocked. And the the, the, the so the World Cup of Pool, you've got the, the the Masters. They can't. They're not going to invite six Polish players to the Masters. They they can't do it. They they have to pick and choose and. The, 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 I agree. The, yeah, the, the, like, the, the, oh, it's very, it's very, it. it's very tough for you guys just to get an invitation to the matchroom invitational events. That's true. Probably same with contracts with big brands. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, everyone would like to have a top uh, country player, and uh, who do you choose from from Poland? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of invitational events, uh, it used to be. I I used to think about it as an issue. Uh, because uh, Whirlpool Masters Workout Pool were definitely the best events uh, of the year that you wanted to qualify to play on the biggest stage. But luckily, Carol and I are filled up so much with quality events that uh, invitational uh, tournaments are, of course, majors still. But even if you don't play them, you still have uh, many chances to prove yourself somewhere else. So right now, I look at it uh, a little bit differently. It's, I'm not... I mean, I'm dying to play there, but uh, if I don't, I still still have other tournaments that I really want to play. It doesn't well, kill your season. So yeah, let, me, yeah. let me jump in. Let me jump well, in here well, because well, uh, well, sorry. Let me jump in here because uh, hmm. I think this this is the one thing. Uh, I guess you're a world champion. I think that was a lot of people's introduction to you uh, from, I guess, the broader pool community because you don't actually play a ton of events you play the big ones like the u.s open the world pool championships the world 10 ball stuff like that but as far mm -hmm. as like uh i mean we see these videos of 
Uh, Mario, he, Alex Kazakis, Dennis Graba, they jump in a car and they, they ride all the way around the country. And then you see the, uh, the, the Polish players, you have Mieszko and Victor and Conrad, they all jump in a car and they, they do all this like social media stuff. And they're, they're, there's a lot of Europeans that really travel around the U.S. a ton to mm-hmm. play in just about all the events, six, seven, eight, nine months a year. But you're not one of those players. Uh, when, if at all, are we going to see you a little bit more in the U.S.? Mm, oh, that's a tough call uh, because, uh, yeah, actually, for for the last couple of years, I was torn apart a couple of times. Uh, I was very close to start traveling with the guys, and um, uh, for many years, I thought that 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 would be my dream to go to just go and uh, go from tournament to tournament. Uh, but you know, my career went a little bit uh, differently. Um, and right now, as we say, I'm maybe I'm not old. I'm 28, uh, but I'm also not a kid anymore. And uh, I just figure out traveling. I'm still traveling a lot. I think for at least half of the year, I'm I'm uh, away from home. Uh, I figured that looking at them, even at Mieszko Konrad, how how tired are, are they sometimes? How much they can lose even passion for pool, uh, playing too much. Uh, how how uh, much of a struggle it can be when you go from a turner, tournament to tournament and you do bad and you have to wait for a couple of days to play another one. Uh, I just figured that maybe it's, it's just the idea that I like, but uh, in reality, that's not really a thing for me. you got other top players that, that don't really do that uh, and are still top players for many years, like Albin or Niels. Uh, they kind of select tournaments and they prefer to prepare for them. And I think it will be more of the same with me. I'm also a family guy. I'm, I'm starting my family right now, but I'm like dedicated for pool. I treat it as my job. So uh, I'm not going to cut on my practice and I'm not going to cut on my major events, but maybe I'm not going to chase all the other events because I also need my practice time. I need to need my work in the dark. Uh, then I feel most uh, more confident uh, with my stroke. I need I need to find my balance, and my balance is more into practice side than playing from all of the tournament in the world. So we're not going to see you take the Fedor uh, route, where you you go and rob seven foot pool tables and make seven hundred million dollars <laughs> a year. I'm not saying no, but I try to <laughs> limit. I, I, I I'm trying to limit my trips for maximum two three weeks. But if a freak of huge event happens, I don't uh, refuse to, to go for over a month. But like going away for three months or more, two, three months, I don't think it's an option for me anymore. I think I would, I would still do that if I was around 20 to 23, 4. Then I would say go for it. It must be a very interesting experience. I kind of regret I don't have it in my bag, but it's not the end of the world. And for now, I'm not planning to do such things. So what is your calendar for this year? Oh, it's pretty packed uh, still, but uh, the, they move around those events uh, very often. So I kind of look only like two, three months ahead. Uh, interesting thing that the majors are happening uh, right in the beginning of the season, uh, of the season to, towards championships. Uh, nine ball and ten ball um so so definitely those i mean february is very busy i go to euro tour in uh, estonia also i play Tallinn open which is a smaller event so i play those two it just depends i just try to pick and match oh, um and later on i don't really know uh, i uh, i don't think everything is still confirmed well when you look at the calendar from matchroom there are i think 34 events but uh still some dates and venues are to be determined. So it's really hard to plan uh, ahead. It's difficult, yeah. Very That's difficult. why it's also difficult to set like, uh, like goals for this year because you don't really know what kind of tournaments will take place. Maybe there will be some new majors. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just so happy that we already can say at least like 10 tournaments are majors. Uh, winning any of them would be a huge success. So, so uh, yeah, probably we are heading into that question. What are the goals for this year? But so answering right now, it's, it's just really hard to set them with this kind of calendar. We're so busy and so much going on. I mean, it's uh, 
it's uh, it's tricky for players because you don't know how to plan anything, and uh, so it can be uh, tiring in a way. But I'm I'm loving it that we have this problem. It just means that the pool world is uh, getting bigger, and we just need this uh, this time to uh, to organize everything. And promoters need to need to need to organize everything uh, when it comes to schedule. Well, there, there must there must there must be one there must be one goal something that is you know. Close to my heart, yeah. the Mus Moscone must yeah. surely be a goal. Regardless, oh, yeah, you mean that? Regardless, regardless of what events you choose to play or what events are, are, are and when this, it, you you haven't but made it, it yet. It, it's it's really really tough to get in. I mean, mm -hmm. if you've won the world nine ball instead of the world ten ball, you're 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 in. You know, so yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're at that you're at that level. It just perhaps you know last year was the wrong events as far as points go. Where do where do you see your your game having to be in order to in order to make that step to to, to get into the selection for the Moscone Cup? Uh, it's actually connected to the previous question because uh, when you see the calendar and you want to make Moscone, you should just select the tournaments uh, only those uh, counting for the nine ball ranking. I already already will miss two of two first of them, Sterling Stone and Derby City Classic, when you can collect points. So I think I think actually my best shot is winning the World Nine Ball Championships because seeing this, uh, having also all the tournaments in Asia, that I don't even know what kind of prizes will be there, but for sure it's gonna be expensive to go there, and I don't expect myself to go for most of them or maybe any of them. I don't I don't really know. We'll have to figure this out. Uh, so uh, through the rankings, so wow, that's gonna be super tough, and I'm not taking it as my top priority uh, but if I if it happens that I get close I win Europe I don't know maybe European Open for example uh, definitely I'm gonna push into that direction uh, but actually I'm uh, talking about setting goals uh, personally I would love to become a medalist of the world championships again this year doesn't matter which discipline that that's my 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 goal I have in my heart for this for this season and the world, the world champ. We talked about the world championships. How special is it going to be playing the world championships at home, basically in your own country in Poland? How big is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard for me to make up my mind which which feels more special to play at, at my home country or defend my title in Las Vegas. Uh, but uh, I try to take things uh, one by one. So first, there there's this one in Poland. I'm very much looking forward. I'm very proud that finally we have a major event in Poland. I, I kind of feel we deserve it uh, to play on our home soil and having the one of the biggest or the biggest event of the year uh, in, in Poland, that, that's very special. And I'm looking forward uh, to see how, how, good of, how good of a job can, can, can we make here. Uh, Especially regarding uh, number of fans going there, because uh, we had some new events from March from last year, UK Open and European Open, both were fabulous. I very much enjoyed playing them. Uh, but for example, in Fulda in Germany, you had an impression that there were more fans. Uh, in in UK there were not so many, but in Fulda you had like for the TV main TV tables there were around 150 to 200 spectators. And that already made a massive difference. So if you could double it up or make it a couple hundred and several hundred, uh, that will that would make uh, players feel more special, definitely. And from what I talked to to Polish players, amateurs, uh, they are very keen to to go to Kielce uh, to cheer. So I'm really hoping that uh, spectators can make a, an atmosphere for the players. What, what do you think? I mean, we, we, we know there's a huge amount of top pool players. Is there a large fan base in Poland that you think will... I mean, I, I'm not quite sure where, where it's located as far as close to major cities, but is do you see the possibility that a lot of people will travel to actually come and support? I really hope for that. And as I said, talking to people, uh, many of them surprised me that they plan to come even from far away even a couple hundred kilometers that they, they still want to attend. Uh, I think it's also because the Polish players started to mean uh, so much on the world stage that sure. for some players that maybe at some point uh, quit playing pool, uh, used to play when they were young, then they started families and they just, they, their cue case got uh, all dusty in the, somewhere in the closet. 
uh, when they just follow and see that we are going to the uh, these stages of the world tournament, their passion like uh, it sparked a, a fire again. Yeah, and uh, uh, it seems to me that way. I, I'm seeing some some faces or or uh, seeing some names uh, that I started to forget about, and they're coming back to pool. Uh, and I think a huge part of that is uh, Polish players being more successful. So, so it's just the perfect timing to held uh, to host a, a world event in Poland, to make it even bigger, to make it like uh, visible for people that uh, we got these huge names like Filipinos, all the European players, Shane Van Boning in Poland, and there you have our Polish guys stood standing with them side by side and even beating them. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the area that it's been held in, do you know the area personally? Yes, yes. It's held in Kielce, uh, and that's uh, where the headquarters of the Polish association is. Uh, I think uh, it was the only choice because the uh, Polish Federation has some good contacts with the local, local authorities that uh, sponsor the event in, in a way because from, I don't know the numbers, but I just know it's, a, it's just a huge investment to organize this kind of event. So they needed to seek for some support from the local government and I think also from the Ministry of Sports. Uh, so, so they just have the best contacts in their area. So this was the only choice to, to organize it uh, right there on site. And, uh, and actually uh, being forced to organize it in Kielce, also all the, all the organizers, I mean, uh, the chairman of the Polish Federation is right there. So. So to handle all of the things, I, I'm not uh, surprised. It, it just had to be Kielce. Uh, but uh, having uh, such a huge event, there are not many places in Kielce where you can actually fit in such a big uh, venue with so many tables and with all the media side. So there is only basically one convention center that could be picked. Uh, it's a huge complex, but it's a little bit uh, on the suburbs of the... Uh, Kielce is not a, it's not a big city. It's pretty nice, actually, but it's... Kind of on a, on a, in a suburb, so so it's 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 rather going to be just a tournament there. And if someone wants to go and uh, see some Poland, he will need to travel a little bit to to, to see the town or see the whereabouts because uh, the city itself is is located pretty nicely in a, in small mountains. Okay, lovely. I hope so. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm coming over. <laughs> You're coming, Jim. By the way, you're coming. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I would love to. I, I will definitely be looking at coming over for uh, one or two days. Definitely. Okay. That, so you're very well welcome. I, I really hope to see you there. I didn't get. I, I didn't make the 128, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't get into the tournament. But I might pump over and say hello at some stage. Oh uh, yeah. Other other duties. If you played all the events, I'm sure you would be there. <laughs> you didn't. Uh, you didn't send a. You didn't send an email to Matchroom and just title it with uh, "Do you know who I am?" <laughs> you didn't try Do you that? know who I know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. So okay, straight up question. Yep. Defend the world ten ball or win the world nine ball in your home nation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was it. thinking about that. Yeah, it, it was killing me actually. But what? <laughs> it's got to be nine ball, right? It's got to be. Defend is tougher it's than winning. Be... Yeah. Yeah. It, it will feel so. I mean, no one has ever done it in ten ball uh, yet. Uh, but we don't have too many champions yet. I think uh, not even a ten of them because it's a it's a fairly it's a young, young, young discipline. Yeah, yeah. I'll make I'll um, make the argument for you in less than a minute. Ready? Who, who, in less who, than fifteen yeah, yeah, yeah. champion for about eight years. <laughs> the world ten ball, yeah. the world the world ten ball champions. It, that's a that's an awesome honor. It's an awesome title. A world nine ball. You win the world nine ball championships and you make the Moscone Cup. You make Moscone, and this is the title I don't have. This is the the. No Polish player even got a medal in nine balls, so that's also a barrier to overcome. And it's on home or soil, it, it would definitely feel special. I mean, Las Vegas is the biggest event of the year of all, I think, having the, uh, the, also the amateur event on the bar tables. Uh, so the, before I won that one, I think I would select this one to win, just because it's so magical there. But I already experienced that, and I think uh, winning in Poland would be as big but in a different way so so yeah yeah it's got to be nine well i'll just say Nate. we had a question here a little bit ago uh and i'm curious too uh, how do you feel about the uh, nine ball being changed uh to rack on the spot versus the one ball in nine ball 
Oh, you know, we we play so many different roles because I'm very much used to the nine ball on the spot because we play like this on uh, all of the Euro tours for many years, but wow. we don't have the the break box. So uh, I think I was for the last years I was more familiar with nine on the spot, so it doesn't bother me at all uh, having it that way. And I wasn't a fan of one on the spot and break anywhere from the uh, from the kitchen. So so I'm glad that they are seeking for a solution. Yeah, Jim, you got anything? That was that was kind of it for me. I, I yeah, yeah, I was going to go into his, into your goals for that, but like you said, with the calendar the way it is, you don't even know what events you're going to be playing, and it, it's 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 what everybody's been shouting for for years: more events, more events, more events. Yeah, now yeah. The players are in a position where they can say, "I'm not going to go to this one. I'm going to take a week off, or I'm not going to go." Whereas before, you were basically forced into playing everything that was available because if you didn't then you were losing out you know um so it's going yes, to be exactly. how, it go, how it goes this way. i mean you you must be delighted as a, as a you know you're 28 years old you know you're 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 not you're you're not a young guy anymore you've got the experience you're a world champion but you're still at an age where you know you can still make positive steps in your career i think so yeah you you must be delighted with, with with the way things are going now with all the events that matching have brought in because this this is this is a time now to really you know to to grab the bull by the horns and to really make a career out of, out of pool no yeah exactly i mean uh, it happened it all happened so fast uh, yeah. and we looking back i gotta say i feel so different being a pool player right now than what i used to feel Back then, I mean, when I was around 20, the biggest uh, event of the year was World Nine Ball held in Qatar when there was 30,000 first prize, which was not bad, but we doubled it up right now and uh, we got three World Championships and all other majors. Back then, it was only the World Nine Ball and maybe China Open and International US Open, which is right now International Open. So like two or three, two or three a year. Uh, so for a 20 years old, uh, basically, if your parents looked at that, that it, there's no point playing. I mean, maybe if you're winning everything, then you're going to make some money. But then it was just a drive for the game, just for the passion. And we were counting that uh, something like this will happen. But now it happened within a ye year or two that uh, we don't really, we are not worried so much. We are uh, hopeful. And... Uh, Maybe it will get even bigger. I mean, uh, those are yeah. Pe people are saying that that we are getting hit and we are going the right direction. But who knows? Uh, the sky is the limit. Yeah, maybe maybe the the sport will grow even bigger. The, so two years from now, we'll look at 2022 that it was small. Uh, maybe not. Even 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 if we had some stagnation at this level, that's already good enough because you can do what you love. You can play pool and make a living out of it. So we reached that level already. That, that's very important. And uh, I think we all feel more of an athlete. We all feel more professional. It's a, I look at myself differently right now than I used to look uh, a couple of years back. Definitely. You're because a, of that. Because of the you're, you're, you're a sportsman now instead of a pool player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think that sums it up. Mm -hmm. But that's it. It's a, it's a, it, I think... Throughout throughout all this transition that the pool's been going through, the first step was that the the players themselves respected their own sport as a sport and not just mm -hmm. a game that they play and they just happen to be good at. And, and then the players can take it further as well. You know, they have to be involved in it. It can't just be one organization or one person who drags everybody with them. The players have to get on board and realize that you know they are responsible for for promoting and being part of the whole package. You know. I agree 100%. Uh, and it's not always this way, probably. Uh, but I, I think we, just like you say, we are responsible for that, and everyone is trying to do their best. I, I'm trying to do my share of that in promotion of, of the sport as well. But uh, yeah, you know, just being competitive is so hard and so time-consuming that we have to put it as a priority, uh, just to work, work, work on your game. Sure. I've got kind of a personal question. Uh, do, yeah, you have any, do you have any extended family uh, uh, from Poland uh, that live in the United States? Um, me? Uh, no, yeah. not really. No, no one from, no. from my family. Because I, I, no. I live in a, a part of Wisconsin. That's a state in the United States that, mm -hmm. that has 
just a large community of uh, Polish uh, yeah. immigrants. Uh, Central Wisconsin is, I have hundreds in my life, I've met hundreds of uh, uh, the sons and daughters and so forth of Polish immigrants that came here and settled in Central Wisconsin. They were, they were farmers at the time, most of them, and they still are. Their families still are, do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There are, I don't know how many, but it will be in millions uh, of Poles in, in the United States. I know Chicago is the biggest, then Detroit, maybe. Uh, the yep, second Chicago, biggest. Chicago, uh, Milwaukee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no one from my family. Okay. So uh, you dropped earlier uh, that you are starting your family. Would you like to discuss this? Uh, I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting married this year, and uh, you know that best, Nate, as as you're invited for my wedding. I say it officially, publicly Whoa. right now, so there is no, Whoa. there is no taking it back. Uh, <laughs> that is up to you if you can, if if you can make it. Um, wow, you already booked the flight. That's crazy. Well, okay. I don't even know what the game is. Oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot to tell you. We, we moved it two weeks. We moved it two weeks. I forgot to tell you. You, I, 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 I don't even remember the dates. I think you told me the dates, but honestly, I don't even remember them. So, <laughs> but we do plan on coming. We, uh, we, I even talked to Dennis Grabo. We're gonna head up to Estonia for uh, a few days, and uh, he's gonna show us around Estonia. So that's gonna be fun. I need to get a hold of Pia to see if he can show us around uh, Lithuania. That'd be fun too. But uh, yeah, we're planning on coming, doing a little tour of uh, Western Europe. So that'll be fun. And that's gonna be great. I think it's a great idea. There's a lot to see, and uh, if I can help you, if you... poop. <laughs> Eastern Eastern part of the world. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think it, it, it's just like uh, well, maybe if in these times it's not the best idea to uh, explore Eastern Europe, actually. Uh, yeah. But it depends where, and uh, and definitely you, you will love it here in Poland. And I'm just. I'm just shocked and uh, super grateful that you're planning to, to come to my wedding. It's in it's in July, and uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a big personal step uh, for sure. Uh, but I'm very happy, and uh, and we'll see who, what's next. And I, I guess we're going to be, uh, as you said, the only uh, English speakers basically that are there. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Native, native. <laughs> oh no! After a couple of shots, after a couple of shots, everyone speaks English. Don't worry. How many well, languages right. do you after, speak? After, after one vodka, Nate speaks Polish pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that does as well. It sounds like Polish. It sounds like Polish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry, you're gonna see some familiar faces there. Yay. Rob, what okay. do you say? I, I'm, I'm well, I just wondered how many languages you speak. Me. Thank you very much. Uh, English and Polish. Oh. Uh, I speak a little bit of German, but just a little bit. I can oh. order some food in the restaurant. Oh, sure. That's it. But I can swear in couple. That's that's from the oh. junior <laughs> time. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, that, that was I was the first fun to just uh, teach each other swear words, so I can swear in couple. <laughs> Not gonna present that though. <laughs> yeah, your sponsors might be watching. You gotta keep it clean, you know. Yeah. 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 Do you want to do a, Do you want to do a quick shout out to all your sponsors while you're here? Yeah, go on. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, all the shout out to Matthew, to Zantips, and uh, to my actually sponsors slash friends, uh, because the rest are, are just them. It's uh, my team and uh, David Sobiek, uh, the leader. Uh, Anka Wozniak, my mental coach that made all the difference without her. I don't think we would be, well, you wouldn't be speaking to a world champion right now. That's my opinion. Uh, maybe we were talking, but I wouldn't be labeled as a world champion. And uh, Tomasz Jedlecki, uh, person who uh, helped me out a lot and actually got me in touch with with my mental coach and, uh, and also a Polish federation uh, that uh, was also very supportive uh, in the last year and I hope it will be also in the coming years. I mean, they are doing a, a really good job and uh, they are also a part of our success in Big Four. And uh, shout out to all my future sponsors. Contact me uh, whenever you like. <laughs> you're right. Well, you're on, you're just like Nate. Take you're just on. like Nate. <laughs> <laughs> future sponsors. I'm not begging. For, I'm not begging for sponsors. I'm begging for free stuff. Just a diamond <laughs> or a predator. Either diamond predator. I'd even settle. I don't want to say That's... I'd even settle for it. 
<laughs> you don't say just... I'm settled for it. You're not going to get it then, are you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm not going to finish that statement. Yeah. No, that's that, that's good. Uh, we wish you the most success. Uh, obviously, um, my wife does not uh, wish you much success because I end up waking her up screaming, and then she thinks she's being murdered. So uh, <laughs> the story behind that is uh, when when uh, Wojtek won his world championship, uh, it was at uh, like three a.m. Uh, local time where we were at, and I started screaming that uh, that Wojtek is a world champion. And uh, ah, I thought I thought it's whenever I message you. It's only yeah. when I become a champion. Well, that that too, but well, I, I don't well, want to tell people. It's, it's I don't want to tell people that you're messaging me at three a.m. They have ice in their veins. <laughs> it's the poles that do also, from what I'm saying. There's a couple talents out there, aren't there? Well, uh, I appreciate you coming and joining us and uh, sitting in for the show today. Uh, I guess this is a pretty good amount of time, huh, guys? We can uh, wrap it up. Okay. Well, I don't. Oh, I did promise, uh, and, and I, I'd like to. I would like to before we go, because I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there that would like a, an update on something that's probably not not as not such a happy Christmas oh, yeah. uh, for uh, a good friend of ours uh, and a good friend of uh, a lot of people uh, within the pool world and the podcast and the podcast. Just a, a legend of the sport, and I'm sure everybody that's listening knows the, roughly the situation that's been going on with Darren Appleton. Uh, he had a, quite a major heart attack. Um, over the Christmas period, uh, in his pool room, uh, his own, uh, his, his, the office space he has. Uh, fortunately, he was with his manager and uh, good friend, uh, King Arauk, also a Polish, Polish pool player, uh, coincidentally enough. Uh, fortunately, King was there uh, when he started getting uh, pains in his chest. And she uh, pulled him into the car, put him into the car, started taking him to the hospital. And uh, it, it went south pretty quickly in the car, from what I understand. Uh, but fortunately, they were already on the way to the hospital. And uh, he, uh, he had a, a massive heart attack, basically, on the way to the, the hospital. Was in a coma for a few days. Um, and, you know, pretty yeah, heavy period for the Appleton family uh, over the Christmas time. But as Darren has proven over the years... In different shapes and form, he's uh, got incredible, incredible sustainability, and he just doesn't give up. And he's made a recovery. I'm not a doctor, um, but from what I understand about the situation that he was in, it's quite remarkable the situation that he's in right now. So he's he's up. He's uh, he's uh, communicating with people. He gets a little bit confused now and again, but he's eating on his own. He's drinking on his own. I've seen f- photographs with friends on Facebook. He's still in the hospital. He's still got a lot of recuperating to go, but things are going in the right direction, and Darren is doing basically what Darren has always done, and um, the guy's got no quit in him, and he just keeps going. And um, So for me personally and from the, I think from everybody from the the QR family, uh, we wish Darren all the best, his family all the best, his dad um, and his brothers and everybody involved. Uh, There is a GoFundMe that's been started and um, you'll find the link to it on Facebook. Um, Please, I know Chris right now as well. Yeah, Christmas is, you know, it's an expensive time for everybody. I understand that. But this is one of the most generous guys I've ever met in the pool world. Um, if he had only one dollar left and he thought that you needed it more than he did, he would happily give it to you. I know that he's helped many individuals and families, um, even just with Scony Cup. Uh, I remember back in, oh, I'd be guessing a year, I think 2015 maybe in Vegas, uh, George Raymond. Uh, who we all got to know uh, at the Moscone Cup, was terminally ill. And Darren put together with a couple of other players, he initiated a, uh, a, a charity to get together to money to make sure this that it was the kid's dream. George's dream was to go to a Moscone Cup and they got the money together to, to get him there. Um, and they made his dream come true. And uh, unfortunately, he lost his battle uh, a year or two later. But that was just, that's just kind of what Darren does, you know. And... Uh, now he needs, you know, now he's the guy that needs a little urge, everybody, you know, anyone who knows him, anyone who knows anything about him. Um, right before this podcast started, we were, uh, I ran a little raffle at, uh, at the beginning of the week or in the weekend, I guess, last weekend. Um, I just made a donation of 900 pounds because of the people that were able to uh, help with that raffle last week. So 
Uh, if you go on to there, the most recent one, I don't know if it's the most recent now, but um, I put on there the the donation that we made, the 900 pounds, and I put the name of every single person who donated to that. So uh, thank you, everybody, who, who uh, gave to that raffle and got yourself a chance at winning that queue. Uh, obviously, we were all doing that for a donation to Darren, but, uh, you know, you'd like to win a queue if you can as well. Uh, that has been made, and... Thank you, everybody who participated in that, and we just wish the best to Darren. I kind of echo what Jim said as far as uh, we're we're all wishing the best for Darren. Uh, glad to see he's on the the road to recovery. It's going to be a long one. Uh, if you see him at uh, a tournament in the future, you know, give him a little give him a little salute. Say, uh, you know, glad to see you back, and just send him your uh, your strength in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I can't wait to see Darren back. It's uh, it's such a difficult time uh, seeing him. I mean, he was just getting uh, so strong back in the game. and uh, He was so ambitious with all his life goals as well. And then this can happen. Uh, but as you say, uh, Jim, we got to see the positives um, from a very uh, critical state. Uh, he's coming back so quickly. Uh, so as you say, it's, it's amazing So what kind of... What kind of a warrior he is, and um, yeah, as a pool player, I can't wait to see by Darren uh, get back on track and re make all of his goals uh, come true. We'll see him back on the table as long as it's not at your, you know, expense, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I don't <laughs> mind him beating me in a tournament. Finals of the World Pool Championships. He made it that one. We get all of those, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, all, all joking aside. Uh, yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, again, sorry that uh, sorry to everybody that's been a little while. Um, if you weren't here in the beginning of the podcast, I'll say it again. Uh, I was kind of just burnt out. I've been doing the podcast now for going on five years, and I haven't really taken a break. Uh, in fact, to the, for the most part, we haven't even taken like a one week break, including you know when we're on the road for events or you know when I'm on vacation. Uh, if you if you watch a, the podcast, ad, or, uh, you know every single week, you've seen that I've actually done some from. Mexico, London, uh, you know, kind of all over the all over the world. Uh, Dominican Republic, we did one from. Uh, so I just need a little bit of time away. So I took a month and just kind of recharged my batteries. Uh, we're going to be back weekly now, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, in fact, tomorrow we're going to be on again, I believe, with uh, Torsten Holman and uh, Mike Quinoza. We're going to do another podcast tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. And uh, thanks for bearing with us while we uh, took a little break over the holidays and recharged our batteries. And uh, yeah, I guess... Same same uh, sign off as always. Thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, commenting and sharing and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. I just want to say that you guys are great. And uh, I think uh, the, that this podcast is something extraordinary and we really need this in the pool world. So just thank you for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. I want to come back already. I just wish it lasted a little bit longer, but you, your uh, list of questions was too short. Uh, that's for the next time. Uh, <laughs> please improve. We're going to save uh, something next nice time, like <laughs> yeah. we'll, 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 we'll win a world nine ball. We'll have way more questions for you. Yeah, yeah that, that's the motivation I needed. Thank you very much, and uh, keep on, uh, keep up the great work because uh, because you you do you do uh, such uh, fabulous things for the pool community. And uh, I wish you Nate all the strength in the world and all the all the fuel because. Uh, People really want to watch it. I love, I love to follow. Uh, I love being a part of it. So you'll just shout out to you to guys. Good Sorry? Yeah. You'll be, you'll in, you'll be invited, invited to our housewarming house party. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. I haven't, even, Thank I haven't you. even had an invite to the housewarming party yet. Hold on a second. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to kick Jim out of the thing, but his, his thing is frozen, so I can't kick him out. <laughs> How tough is this? Like too strong. Are we still All right. on? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's been great, fellas. Right. We're not. 